another set of issues, actually, to talk with us about. Um, but uh, I'm Amy Hansen. If there were IRB in 2002, I, this would be your supervisor in District 8. Um, <laughs> yeah! And the board would be a different place. Um, but uh, but we, um, we have Eileen Hansen on the Ethics Commission, which is great. And she's working hard for us. And she is now at least she's now willing to come into our doors. <laughs> for a couple of years there, I think Eileen was a little worried that if she did anything political, she couldn't, you know, she couldn't show up. But it's good to have you here and thank you for coming on. so much time tonight devoted to ethics, and I'll try to be really short because there's so much on your agenda um, and really important discussion with Supervisor Avalos on the budget. Um, just in response to what Raphael said in terms of not, you know, being concerned about coming in the door, that is really true, and I tried to be as supportive as I could of the Mill Club without actually participating in the Mill Club because initially when I was appointed by the Board of Supervisors to the Ethics Commission, uh, folks were really paying attention and there was a really strong move to keep me off the Ethics Commission because people who have been engaged in the political life of our community are not uh, the appropriate people, it was felt by some, to be on the Ethics Commission. I would argue hmm. that they're the very most appropriate people right. to be on the Ethics Commission. And Jo Lynn is a perfect example of somebody who really has been in the depth of understanding the way politics works in this city. He was on the staff of the Ethics Commission, then he was on the Ethics Commission itself. He knows so many details about how this all works, and that's the kind of brain that we need on the Ethics Commission side, that he's not still on the Ethics Commission, but he and I try to work together as supportive as possible through the morass of what is the ethics issue in this city. Um, I wanted to say that while I didn't come to talk about this, I have to respond, however briefly, to what Joe said. And this is one instance where we, we disagree. There are very few instances, I have to say, where we disagree. Um, so I would ask you to kind of hold your thinking about it, but also think about it for, as Joe suggested, another month. I think a proposal of what to do with the ethics budget at this point is premature. We on the Ethics Commission, staff of the Ethics Commission, have not done our job yet with the Board of Supervisors and the Mayor to advocate, in my view, strongly enough for not cutting the ethics budget. The Ethics Commission is supposed to be an independent agency within the city. We're supposed to be looked at differently than other departments. And that gives us reason, I think, for us to, to argue that we should not be cut in the way other departments are. Is that politically realistic? I don't know. We're seriously in trouble. Obviously, we know that in this city. Can I say that ethics is more important than the health department? Uh, no, I can't say that. I would argue that both are very important. What do we do about that? We have a long way to go to struggle through a strategy and to figure out where those cuts are going to come. But to argue for cutting a, a portion of the Ethics Commission before we've really tried the argument that we should not be cut. And then if we lose that argument, to struggle among ourselves about where and how much we are willing to cut and to spend a lot of time struggling before we are willing to cut anything. I think it's premature. I also think that while Joe is correct that we've got a lot of problems internal to the Ethics Commission and we have not done a good job of enforcement, and I would be the first person to say that, to me the way to deal with that is not to just cut out what in many ways is the, the heart and soul, the guts of ethics work in the city and sort of reduce us then to a body that makes people file forms and makes people because they're a few days late or they didn't fill out this box correctly. That to me is not, it's not worth having an ethics commission. I mean, there's a lot more that we do, but if we can't enforce the laws, if we can't try to go after the big guys and stop focusing so much on the low-hanging fruit or the, or, the, or the small guys, then what's the point of having an ethics commission? So that's just my kind of brief response to Joe. Um, we're, 
right now engaged in trying to hang on to FX dollars, and we'll see if we're successful. I'm very happy to come back next month and talk about it more. So we've been that side for a minute. Um, the reason I really came tonight, okay, are there questions about that? It looks like there are questions. Where, where does the budget go to? Okay, what? $500,000 error. Where does the budget go to? Where does the budget go to? Yeah, what expenses? In terms of enforcement? Correct. It would be staff. So we would cut Silent. the enforcement yeah. staff if we cut, um, if we cut out enforcement. If we were willing to say, okay, enforcement isn't working, so we'll just get rid of the staff. We do enforcement, but they're not doing the job, so why don't we just get rid of them? We wouldn't, we would do enforcement and we get rid of the staff who are doing enforcement and we hang on to our auditing staff and our campaign finance officer, you know, and all the other staff. If they're not doing a good job, why not replace them? Exactly. That's what we're all thinking. Yeah, that's, you know, that's not going to happen by getting rid of any money in order to fund enforcement. If we get rid of the people who are doing enforcement, then we're going to have to replace them. Yeah. Okay. So if we get rid of the staff, then we're going to have to replace them. Okay. So if we get rid of the staff, then we're going to have to replace them. Okay. So if we get rid of the staff, then we're going to have to replace them. Okay. So if we get rid of the staff, then we're going to have to replace them. Okay. So if we get rid of the staff, then we're going to have to replace them. Okay. So if we get rid of the staff, then we're going to have to replace them. Okay. So if we get rid of the staff, then we're going to have to replace them. Okay. So if we get rid of the staff, then we're going to have to replace them. Okay. So if we get rid of the staff, then we're going to have to replace them. Okay. So if we get rid of the staff, then we're going to have to replace them. Okay. So if we get back into the Ethics Commission to hire the new and perfect enforcement staff. Yeah, now, we don't do? like what the staff is doing, and we don't like the fact that the Ethics Commission in the main, or the bosses of the enforcement staff, aren't supporting. They're not doing what some of us are doing, unless it's still a job. That's not really our decision, right? I mean, it would be our decision as a commission would be a policy do we believe in enforcement or do we not? And then if we say we don't believe in enforcement, it would be the job of the executive director to lay out all the staff. Can the commission fire an executive director? Yes. Yeah. That's the one whose personnel decision we can make. Good question. John and Paul and Mark. John. At City College, the administration in the, in the year 2005 believe the election, they misappropriated public funds. This later came out in the Chronicle for a series of stories. But when those funds were first misappropriated, one of the companies involved figured out that this was not legal, sent a letter to the Ethics Commission. Nothing happened. The letter was printed on the front page of the Chronicle. Nothing happened. Colin oh became a whistleblower that involved Time after time after time, uh, he went to <laughs> we got to do something. <laughs> to this day, and then the Chronicle came out with another instance, $100,000 this time by City College misappropriating funds. Nothing happened. To this day, City College has not gotten even a letter of reprimand from John Roberts. 